Hey GH peeps, what's happening? It's your girl, Twerry Babes, coming at you with a late night review for Thursday. It is Thursday, guys, March 14th, 2024. Hope you guys had a good Thursday. I had a pretty amazing Thursday. I say that because this is the first day I've had that I didn't have a headache. I'm just telling you right now, and I didn't have to take no medication to, to not have one. The sinus pressure is still a little bit, but it ain't what it used to be because it rained, baby. It rained. Girl, I, guys, I needed that rain. Okay? Pretty sure the plants and, the, you, know, the, you know, everything else needed it too. <laughs> How was GHGH in for y'all? Any highs? Any lows? Any super lows? Mm-hmm. I understand. Any, oh my gosh, for real, bro? For real, bro? For real, bro? Hmm. Yeah. Y'all with me on that? I'm talking about two different characters. That's how they had me looking. I'm like, for real? Yeah. As always, please leave your highlights and your comments in the comments section, guys. You guys be teaching me things. You know, y'all open my perspective to, you know, different stuff. And I just love the feedback. I love, you know, the discussion, the roundabout, the, you know, what, what, where, what do you think is going on? You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Because then I'm just talking to myself. So I love getting you guys' comment, comments and feedback on the daily shows. And if you haven't already liked and you like this, um, you know, the like the content, hit that like button, peeps. And if you've been following me for a while and you just haven't hit that subscription button, please, guys, hit that subscription button. It ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> and for the new subscribers, hey, what's up, y'all? What's up? I pray I earn your guys' a subscription. Um, to my current subscribers, I appreciate every single time, guys. I appreciate y'all every single time. I appreciate y'all all so very much. But let's talk about GH, honey. So the, we start this show off today at Sonny's Penthouse, guys. And Lois then brought some cardboard-tasting baked ziti. At least that's what Sonny said. He said he didn't, you know, now what that... Mm -mm. And after, you know, much discussion, it's turned out that, you know, she's there to check on her homie, you know. She knows that he's been there for Olivia, and no one's really been there for Sonny. And I'm not going to say no one's really been there, but Sonny's been like an island. Like, his family, they're kind of all over the place, you know. Christina, I'm, it's odd. I'm pretty sure they're going to have a uh, Sonny and Christina scene coming up pretty soon. But, um... Yeah, Sonny's been kind of an island, which, you know, is kind of his fault, you know. But Lois knows that he needs somebody else he can talk to, somebody he can vent to. And he don't got Michael, and he don't got Carly, and he don't got Jason, and he don't got Nina. All he kind of have is Ava. <laughs> and that name pops up in their conversation. So moving along, um, he, he, Lo, um, Lois tells Sonny that he can lean on her. And Sonny, Sonny does just that. He tells her that he will never forgive Jason if he shot Dante. But he also will not forgive himself. And I can understand that. I can understand it both. If Jason actually did do that, I can understand him never being able to forgive Jason. That's his son. But I also can understand that he should already be not forgiving himself because he is the starter of this situation. No, he didn't have the cops come. You know, that is what it is. I honestly think Sonny's plan would have worked if the cops hadn't got involved, but I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sonny uh, discusses seeing Jason and that he was in complete dis disbelief when Ava showed him the picture. And uh, and Lois is like, Ava? <laughs> he, he tells her about Ava's involvement and everything. And Lois is like, mm-hmm. And how, uh, you know, and how Jason forgot about being, uh, how about Jason being gone so long that he forgot about his loyalty to him. And I was like, dude, Jason ain't no puppy. He ain't no dog. He is a human. Nobody owes you their forever loyalty, you weirdo. I don't know, guys. I, don't, <laughs> I thought that was a little bit much when he said that, okay? Oh, he's been gone so long, he forgot that he's supposed to be loyal to me. Like he's some poodle or something. Just my opinion. Don't come after me. Um, Where was I at? Lois discuss, uh, discusses Jason choosing 
to be Sonny's friend and how he walked away from his family. You know what I'm saying? To be Sonny's friend. And Sonny brings up, you know, yeah, and I've always trusted Jason. Maybe too much. And this is where he goes, and I'm like, okay, now he's going into the dark place, guys. Give me one second. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. So now Sonny's going into the dark place, and that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> He brings up about him marrying Carly when he was over in Nixon Falls playing Tootsie Footsie with Nina. And I'm like, how dare? How dare he? Really, bro? Really? Really, bro? You're going to just completely forget by the fact that the mob was going to unalive Carly. That that So Jason should have just let Carly get unalive. Or better yet, Carly unalive Jason because that's basically what they were offering one of them had to off the other so you would have been okay with them offing themselves than getting married now bear in mind they thought you were dead homie because the woman you married to currently didn't let them know you was alive so if they knew you was alive none of this would have never happened you know what I'm saying? So the culprit really ain't Carly or Jason. It's your wife, Nina. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm sorry, guys. I'm pulling it back. When Lois mentions the reason why Carly and Jason hooked up, and she really don't have all the details, it sounds like, either. He like, yeah, maybe. Or maybe I just thought wrong. Maybe they were in love all, of t all this time. And that's why they, uh, but I just know they broke my trust. And I was like, are they trying? Let me read this one more time. When Lois mentions the reason why Carly and Jason married, he's all like, maybe I thought wrong. Because she's like, well, did you think, did you, did you, did you think they cheated on you or something? Or what? He says, no, no. But maybe they were in love this whole entire time. And they broke my trust. I was like, you sanctimonious dick. Are you serious right now? <laughs> now, you know what? I can, give, <coughs> I can give Sonny this. Yeah, you're right, my boy. Carly was very much in love with, um, with Jason. You knew that when you first married her the very first time, and she didn't want to because she didn't love you because she loved Jason, and she was very much open about it. Because she wanted to hold out to see if Jason was going to say yes to her. Because she wanted to be with, with Jason. She didn't want to be with you. At the beginning, she didn't want to be with you. You wanted to be with her. You sabotaged that too. Her and. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> well, I don't even know what he wanted. Because I just feel like he just wanted Carly because Jason did. But no, I'm, I shouldn't say that, guys. I shouldn't say that, guys. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about that, though. But I'm going to keep it going. <laughs> He broke, oh, and let me bring this up. And he was talking about, he they broke my trust. Like the trust you broke when you slept with Carly and Jason had to leave for the year. Thank you. Thank you, whoever commented that, for bringing that back up to my attention so I could throw it up into this video. <laughs> he then says he tried to make his marriage work, but Carly made it impossible. At this moment, I am screaming, what? You see how my face is animated right now? Carly caught you in the bed with another woman. Because you just would not for you would not just chill and give her her space. You had to be obtrusive. You had to be in her face. You couldn't give her space because she found out that you and Nina had some wild thing going on. And all this time, Nina was her arch enemy. And she had kept, kept you from your children, her children. Yeah, yes, yeah, honey. You did it. Carly did everything to sabotage. I, I need somebody to stand up to this man, other than John, with receipts. And I need him to eat those receipts. And then he could heal. And then he could be our sonny again. Because this person right now, I mean, some of my some of my uh, my peeps on here have said 
one of them called him Sanctimonious Sonny. So it's obviously he's been Sonny the Sanctimonious. That's what she called him. I love it too, by the way. I loved it. Because <laughs> it fits him. I will also add narcissistic too. And if y'all want to be mad and argue, I'm not going to argue with you guys. I looked up these actual things before I said them just to make sure I was right in saying that. And I'm right. As far as I'm concerned. But if he thinks he did anything at all to save their marriage, other than be a bully and trying to force her to just deal with him and she and not be honest about him and Nina. Oh, mm. We all seen the same, so come on guys. There was none that was that was not Sonny's I that was not no way of working things out at all. Then he goes back to Dante and Jason and the shootings and all this and everything and and that's when I wrote down someone called Sonny Sanctimonious. I will add narcissistic. He then talks about the distance between him and Dante and how he had been telling him when you mean distance, you've been in the past. Because I, I can't see no other distance going on. And how he had told him to stop being in his way. And that made him feel so guilty. Because that was like the last thing he said to his sonny. To Dante. But Sonny has to realize. Because that's who you are. That's who you are, bro. That's just who you are. You need some self-healing. You need to let go of all the putrid that's inside of you. Admit to your faults and your wrongs. And be a better and stronger man. Still love you though. Still love you. You're still sexy, Don. But you ain't cool, bro. And I wouldn't date you. I hear everybody else saying, "Hey, hey, hey!" Not me. No, not me. He then talks about how Dante has had his back for the last two years, and he's been the only one that's truly supported him. And I thought about what he was saying when he said that, and I realized that the reason why Dante's the only one that's been supporting you, fool, is because you didn't stab him in the back recently. Not did you not just get on a stand? Did you not just get on the stand and testify with the woman that lied to your family about, about your son and how he should be giving visitations to... You stood there and you let this woman defile your son in court. Slept with the woman that lied to your family. Thought they had made up... Your babies. Donna. Avery. Christina. Your baby. Since that's all the kids we really think about. Even Dante, your son, and Michael. Lied to them all about you being dead. And you married her. And then made the family look at her and be like all happy about it. Try to make the rest of us look like you was, was all happy about it. No, bro. No, bro. There's no passes for you on this one, bro. I need Sonny to take the, uh, uh, a self-help pill. I need him to take a pill of reality. It would be great. Soap opera reality. However we want. This man needs healing and the drinking has not helped. And the not drinking hasn't helped him. Let me get to the... Uh, that's, but that's why he's only had Dante for the past two years. Oh, and, and, oh he, I guess he forgot about Nina. He had her too. <laughs> Lois reminds Sonny that Dante probably has talked smack to him in the past. And Sonny's forgiven him so many times. She also reminds Sonny that he ain't God. And he can't control events. He still blames himself, though. And as, as he should. But as far as preventing all this from happening, he couldn't have prevented none of that. You know, it was... The only way he could have prevented it is by not have not calling that, you know, meeting and setting it up, trying to find out who's after him and stuff. But I also feel Sonny. I do feel Sonny in not trusting the cops. And as we see at the end of the show, we have good reason for that. So we're going to move along to GH um, Hospital. We got Sam, and she's still with her man, Dante. And Christina's, of course, coming to see her sister. And they're discussing Jason, the shooting, the Invader article. And it's Christina's actually surprised to see that Sam is not all rah, rah, rah. Jason didn't do it. And Sam tells her, if that's what you're here for and that's what you want to hear, then you can definitely reach out to Carly and y'all can converse there. <laughs> they discuss Carly seeing Jason and Sam can't stand the sight of Carly right now and wants her just to leave her alone. Now, guys, we all could just be like, Sam, we should have a cheat, Sam. <laughs> but we got to think where this woman's head's at right now, okay? Her love, her love is laying on that, on that bed not waking up. And she has been at this hospital for several days, not eating properly or not. She does look better today, though. I will give her that. She looks better today because she's been looking pretty, you know, pretty pupid. Not pupid, but pretty bad, you know, in the past couple of days, but it's understandable. But she's looking better today, like she got rest. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, 
But she, she, I, I just, I'm not gonna jump on Sam. I'm not gonna hurt her. I'm not gonna hate on her. I can't. You know why I can't? Because Sam is humble as hell. Okay. And when she, and she does, and she eats humble pie all the time, sometimes a little too much for me. And I'm pretty sure she's gonna be eating a lot of pie. And I'm pretty sure she's going to be doing a lot of apologizing. And I'm pretty sure she's going to be doing over-apologizing to Jason. And we're just going to let Sam be in her grief. Because right now, Dante ain't wake enough to soothe her, soothe her aching heart. And, we, and she doesn't want to portray Dante by just going, Jason, Jason, Jason. Because that, in her my heart, is betraying Dante. And in some craziness, I can understand that. So I'm not, going to, I'm not on the Sam hate train, and I'm not about to jump on it now. I'm just not. She's doing a phenomenal job at, at it, too. Um, and, and, and she loves Carly and once she, everything call, comes apart she's also gonna girl I'm so sorry and Carly's gonna be like girl bye you was mad you was hurt about your man I understand it's all good I understand I understand it's all good cause Carly would've did the same thing girl, any woman would I don't wanna hear about anybody girl bye get away from me my man's in that bed not waking up shit I don't even know if he's gonna come up ever wake up um but anyway um I will say this. Sam really doesn't tell the full story when she tells Christina about how uh, Carly seen Jason and everything like that. She made it seem like they had some fabulous reunion and then, you know, but he never mentioned anything else. She failed to mention the cops coming in. If she did, I don't remember that part, but she really didn't. Carly said point blank. He came in. I was surprised. I seen him. I hugged him. I seen he was shot. I was like, oh my God, let me go get the first aid kit. She went and got the first aid kit, said something about Bobby. He, Bobby's dead. Bobby dead. Putting the bandage on. Boom, boom, boom. I might have left out something and if I did I'm sorry but I think that's kind of how it went and I know Sam couldn't have attained all that because in her mind all she hears is Dante's monitor so once again girl I'm gonna let you pass on this I'm gonna let you pass as long as you ain't going out trying to unalive people because you know how Sam could be when somebody threatens her lovers <laughs> anywho uh, no 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 that's why I'm trying to try this oh so then uh, while they're having that that um and then when they say, well, did Jason say anything? She says, but Jason was being classic Jason, as, as always, and not saying anything. Yeah, well, if you know, then you know. You shouldn't be questioning it then. I'm funny. That I'm, I was amused that she said that, classic Jason not saying nothing. If you know that he's that classic self, then you know there's a reason why he's not saying nothing. And we all know why there's a reason why he's not saying nothing, too, because there's an agent there that we don't know if he's a good guy or not. He's walking into everybody's home with that badge. Moving along, that's when Danny tries to sneak through. This boy here. This boy here. Okay, this is Sam. I know that we all want to call him little uh, Jason. That's Sam. I think Jake is the actual Jason because Jake, Jake, real Jason didn't like guns, didn't like none of that violent stuff at all, actually. But D Danny's Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe Sam and a little bit of Jason, too. But like I said, Danny tries to sneak through, and he didn't sneak out. But he tells his mom he didn't sneak out, but lied to, lied to Yuri about dropping him off. When Sam states starts telling D Danny about her reasons for them staying home, because she's going out of her mind with worry. So the only, uh, the only, the only um, calmness she has is knowing that her kids are safe and at home. Christina. And I'm actually like, yay, Christina, because I guess this, I think this needed to be said, even though I don't know if that's why Danny was there. It's like, well, I don't think we should forget. I don't think we should, uh, I, no, she says, I mentioned, she mentions the possibility of him being there because Jason and the situation with Dante. And maybe that's why he's there, which makes Sam be like, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I've been so wrapped up into Dante. I haven't had, I didn't even think about how this is, what this is doing to you. Because in a way, I can see what that, what that, how that could mess up a kid's head. Is that the man that's been raising them, the man that their father came and shot him, that could mess up. Because that child's, now that child's loyalties are just all messed up. And this could have really been a good conversation between Sam and Danny. But um, they got to keep her in there with Dante. Not saying that that's wrong or anything, but that's what's going on. But she does apologize to tell him, apologizes to him, to him, and tells him that he's not a kid. And then they do discuss Jason, and she says Jason's always been drawn to danger, 
And when she said that, I wish she would have added, but it's always been because he wanted to protect his loved ones. Jason has never just, it's always been to protect someone. He's always been out to protect someone. And she didn't say that. And I was a little bit like, you, that was a missed opportunity to let that her, her son know. And I think it's because of the thing, situation with Dante. She's hard to say for her that he's out here protecting people, but he shot Dante because then they would have to have that conversation. But he, And that's another thing. There's two people. Why are we just automatically going to Dante? That is the only thing that bothers me about everybody. The only person who's who's actually got a good grounding of the situation is, oddly enough, Molly and Anna. I was I, I would talk about the Molly and Anna. I was surprised, though. I was like, is Molly making some kind of sense? Oh, my God. Anyway. Uh, oh, we're about to talk to you about them in a few minutes, actually. Anyway, um, she says that, yeah, he's about him being drawn to danger. And I was like, and Sam knows why. And maybe he has a reason. She's sure he does. But his reasons are not like other people. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Why are you speaking jibber-jabbers? What do you mean his reasons are not like other people? His reasons have always been about protection of his loved ones and Sonny's loved ones. That's how it's always been. Protecting. That's what Jason does. We might call him an enforcer, but he's actually the protector. Because there's so many times that dummy, dummy, Sonny, Sonny would not be here if it hadn't been for Jason. And that goes along for her, too, because he saved her butt out of a lot of situations that she herself has gotten into. Uh, Sam, Sam, Sam. Chris brings up um, the fact that he's not guilty till he's found guilty by the court of law. And I bring up the fact that I, we don't, I don't think it's ever going to get to that point. <laughs> Sam um, says when Dante wakes up, he will tell them exactly what happened. And uh, we all hope and wait for that. Um, guys, I'm going to stop the video and then I'm going to start it again because I'm having some video issues with my phone, but I'll be right back. So I figured it out, guys. I'm back. Woohoo! So um, we're, now we're at the PCPD, and Anna is listening to the 911 call. And guys, when she was listening to that call, I was just saying to myself, once again, this does not sound like the man that you know would purposely shoot somebody and then do all this madness. But anyway, Molly comes in to discuss charges. And Anna is not fully convinced that Jason actually tried to murder anyone. They discuss the 911 call, the DNA evidence, the bandage that was used to, to, to bandage Dante, the fact that Jason and Dante's blood was both on the, um, the jacket. They also discuss, well, did Jason shoot Dante? <laughs> and Molly's pre preliminary theory is off. Like Molly, my notes. <clears throat> I'm not going to take it back either. Anna keeps saying that, Anna keeps saying that's what the evidence is, sh is, sh is showing, is that Jason shot Dante. But I, guys, I need your help. I really, I haven't watched crime shows in a long time, so I may be off. I may not know anything anymore about exactly how this all works. But I thought evidence meant they had like the gun, the confession from either party, video footage of the actual shooting. I don't know, something like that. But when you have no evidence, you have two per people that you could use for this, and you're automatically pointing the finger at Dante. I have to, I know, I know. This is soapy, but they got it. They should have been did a little bit better with this part because it's almost because we're looking at everybody like, God. So you just gonna automatically not blame the other guy? Make it make sense. Come on, please. But anyway, um, where was I at? But Anna doesn't want to believe it. You know why? Because she thinks the world of Jason. And she also, and she, I'm just going to put down, she just, she discusses how awesome Jason is and that the fact that she trusts him, he saved her life and how he was there for Robin and how Robin loves him. But she has to remain impartial and trust that the system is going to work. And we all know sometimes that's not exactly true. But I do like when Molly was mentioning how, you know, it's, she's, you know, how, how does she do that? How does she ma maintain 
impart impartiality. Unfortunately, I didn't write down the response. <laughs> Molly says, three years ago, even with evidence, she would have never believed that Jason was guilty of murder. She actually worshipped Jason. And I was like, okay, I guess, yeah. Older sister's boyfriend. He was hot. She loved Sam and him. They had an epic love story. He was always dependable. And he loved Danny. And he saved Christina from the cold. They discussed conspiracy charges. And if he's willing to shoot. And then Anna does bring up one situation. And that may. That, that could be put into the brain. If Jason was willing to assist in getting Shunny shot. Then why wouldn't he have an issue? Why wouldn't he shoot Dante? And I was like, ooh. That was a little, I was slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> I was slightly uncomfortable with that one. I was like, oh, I didn't even think about it like that. <laughs> yeah, that was some real spit though. I, I had to give her. If he would if he would set up Sonny to get shot, why wouldn't he um, have a problem killing Dante? But nobody knows that that's why the guy missed was because Jason made sure he missed. Um, Molly, um, okay, discuss if he's willing to shoot Dante, why not Dante? But then um, Anna mentions the anomaly is the 911 call. Molly, for one, I, 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 hit, I put this in highlights. Molly, for once, was spot on. The other guy could have shot John could have shot Dante and Jason was the one who tried to help him I was like okay so that's exactly what happened why are we not going with this theory the DA thinks it come on Molly <laughs> well she doesn't work at the DA but she works at the DA's office um and then Anna comes back with well why didn't he wait and I'm like come on Anna why would, why would you wait Anna you know something's going on. The man's been missing for two years. Hasn't alerted his family. Something is going on. That's why he didn't wait. Because he couldn't. Plus he had to get rid of the body. I don't know what's going on with that. That was kind of strange. Um, they discussed Jason jumping off the bridge and his chances of survival. And that he most likely did survive. Now he's injured and hiding. And that he could be anywhere. And Anna was telling her how she knows about these sniper teams and how they move. And that he's probably already left the country. And Molly is actually happy that she doesn't have to prosecute. Because she does not want to prosecute him. She doesn't. Even though she loves Dante and she loves her sister a lot. It's just this is... Nobody wants to prosecute somebody. That, first of all, you couldn't prosecute him. You wouldn't win because you have no actual evidence. But all you have is theory. And you don't. You can't put a person in murder jail for life for theory. Well, I guess you could do anything in soap opera land. Anna knows something else is going on. She, something else is going on. I just can't see it. We seen it at the end, Anna. I'm just trying to figure out how John is tied into all of this. So now we're at Carly's place. Speaking of the devil. John pays Carly a visit, questioning why she believes Jason is the innocent one. And he wants her to prove it to him and help him so he's not going to waste government money going after somebody that wouldn't do it. Carly says because he's not reckless or stupid and he would never shoot somebody without knowing who they are and he would never shoot a cop and especially not Dante. He would shoot any cop for that matter. And when he asked, well, was that because of Sonny? And she, she said that's because of Dante because Dante is raising Jason's son. That's why. And... That's my girl, because she's telling the truth, right? Jason, uh, John points that that could be another motive. Some men have a problem with other men raising <laughs> their sons, and Carly hits back with, so, oh, so that's the thing. Now, that's the new theory. Jason hid forever, came back, set up, lured Dante into an alley, and, 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 was, and shot him over jealousy. <laughs> Carly then throws another good punch, and then she throws herself down the front of stairs. Do your job. You don't even have evidence that he shot him, but I'm sure you have evidence that he saved him, right? And John's like, 
How you know that? Carly, this is why I love my girl. She a thinker. Nobody believes her, but she fires it right back. Well, you remember Jocelyn Jacks, right? The, one of the second responders, that was my daughter. My daughter told me what happened. My daughter told me how they found him. So once again, do your job and find out who shot um, Dante. <laughs> and keep Jason's name out your mouth. <coughs> Why are you not going after the other theory that the other guy did it? They discuss why he didn't. Oh, so John asked, well, why, didn't, why don't you think uh, Jason waited then? If he didn't do anything, why would he wait? And I just find that so funny. Police will always say, oh, why didn't you wait? Because you were going to throw me in jail anyway. <laughs> you weren't going to sit there and hear my side like you ain't hearing Jason's side now. And we know why Jason didn't turn himself into John. John says, well, you, uh, they discuss why he didn't wait. And, Charlie, and Carly says it. He don't want to go to jail and deal with you and corrupt police. <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> John says that he should be, that then she should be grateful. Because the only reason why J Jason's still here is because he was shot. Because he would have never, because he probably wouldn't have came back if this hadn't happened. <laughs> we know, John. You, we, we sure, we, you, we know more than you. I mean, you know more than us, John. Mr. Cates, Agent Cates. The John then smirks because um, Carly says you have offended me and John says you have offended me too. And John then thinks that it's funny that every time he mentions Jason's name, it gets under Carly's skin and he walks out because she said the next time you come over here, you better have a warrant. So we're going to go over to the quarter mains. And over drinks, Drew tells Willow that he broke up. This honestly should not have been a conversation at all. I, I really don't know why we had to have this scene at all. I mean, I, I love me some Willow. Mm -hmm. But if she was just put into this converse, this scene to give Drew some wind to his, to, his, to his ignorance. I'm sorry, I'm so over Drew. This is the other person I was talking about. When I, when I look both, Drew's the other one. I'm so overdrew, and I hate that because I just wrote, they just writing him so raggedy. Uh, and the reason why he says that he broke up with Carly, I'm on, I'm on narrow it down because she has faith in J in Jason. You break up with somebody because she has faith in somebody. You simp ass. <laughs> Willow tells tells Drew that Michael when they talk about. You know, oh, did 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 uh, Michael? Cause uh, Drew asked Drew asked Willow, "What? How does Michael feel about Jason get, being back?" And Michael and Willow tells him he's thrilled that he's alive. I'm like, what is? What? I thought you had memories. Don't don't you got memories of a couple of years ago? I, I know you was I know you was in the in you know held up by the Cassadines, but you you forgot before you left what it was like. What what was going on? Of course, Michael would be happy. Be happy to, to be happy that that Jason's alive. Of course, he would. Why wouldn't he? Just like, of course, Michael would have sided with his father over that situation. Of course, he would. Drew, you forgot who you was. Drew forgot who he is, guy. Drew don't remember Billy Miller. Drew, obviously, Ryan just came in and was came Ryan Lavery and didn't even become Drew. I don't think. I think we just. I think his name is Drew Lavery. <laughs> Oh my gosh, take this man off the screen, please. Willow tells Drew that Michael is thrilled that Jason's alive and doesn't believe that Jason did it either. And he's like, neither does Carly. That's why he broke up with her. <laughs> and let me just say, crazy-eyed, unshaven Drew, please put this boy in a barbershop and get him cleaned up. Something is wrong with this man. I do not want him with Jordan. He is jealous of Carly's support for Jason. And I said to myself, only a weak man would be. Willa mentions the fact that, don't you think this is hurting Carly? Do you think she just was like, oh, okay, yay, you're breaking up with me. <laughs> and that maybe he's underestimating himself and Carly's feelings for him. I agree with you on that, Willow. Drew keeps on simping. Her ha I don't want her having to prove all the time that she loves me more than Jason. I said, simp. 
motherfucker. What the fuck? What man was gonna do that? So you gonna make her do that? You gonna make her every time Jason come in the room, she gotta move from Jason to stand next to you and smile? Oh my gosh, you insecure twit. You are so insecure. You are not our Drew. We want our Drew back. Not we. We gotta get another Drew, guys. This this is too much for me. This is too much for me. Mm. I, I guess we can't get our Drew back. Rest in heaven, Drew. We gotta. I don't know. We we gotta. Get, I don't know. This this is not happening though. Drew keeps on simping. <laughs> ah, he intends to find love now. And I'm saying to myself, please. He didn't say the word love, but he's talking about moving on. I'm like, only a whole moves on before the for the for the ink dries on the paper. Can you wait a little bit? Can you let some air breathe? You love her so much, but you're already looking for love. He loves her so much, but he already looking for love. I just can't do it. I can't with Drew right now, guys. And I'm telling myself, please not, Jordan. Please don't do this, Jordan. Please. So Jordan's going to have to deal with another insecure man. And it's, and it's her ex-husband's best friend. how I feel about all of that, okay? GH, y'all better hear us now. Y'all better hear us loud. No. <laughs> Say it with me, crowd. No. <laughs> I know y'all gonna comment, no. <laughs> uh, Michael then walks in and now Drew's all of a sudden very tired. Boy, go home. Willow tells um, him that he was the best for Carly. Not the best for Carly. And I don't even want them two together would still be Jason. Would always be Jason. Jason will always be better than you. I'm just joking. That, see, that's why I don't like. Because Drew is a good father. Billy was a good father. Billy was about his family. I don't... Let me get off of it. Let me get off of it. She tells Michael that Drew and Carly broke up. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I really don't care. I'm happy that she got free from him. <laughs> then we're going to go over to the boathouse. Guys, this scene was giving, okay? So we got Michael bringing Jason a change of clothes because Willow said so. And they discuss Willow being bossy because <laughs> she is. I like her and her bossiness. And Michael's like, well, she's so sweet with it. You really don't even see that you're being bossed, but you're being bossed. And the loss of Bobby. And Jason tells him about the first time he held Michael. And it was Bobby that handed it to him. And told him how to hold him. And I remember that scene. And it almost brought me to tears. And then, J and then Michael said, I just can't. I understand. You know, because uh, Sonny. Uh, um, Jason said, that was the scariest moment of my life. And Michael's like, I understand. Because that was how I felt when I held my daughter. And you just need to see my daughter. I can't wait to teach her to meet you. And. before that i know uh, jason tells michael about his escape from the tunnels and that he met two men with guns and they took him as prisoner and they flew him out of greece and he ended up in a room with no windows talking to the man the man and he, and he had to do a job and this man had leverage to force him to agree what do you guys think the leverage is it can't be much dex magical son is already there with sunny so that can't be it the only person would have to be somebody that they're related to sky's daughter blaze's you know it's not sky's daughter if it's not blaze well we know it's not blaze now sky's daughter or Morgan, if Morgan's alive. What do y'all think? Somebody said Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. It's got to be somebody that... It's got to be somebody so real that Jason's willing to risk it all. And, I mean, if it's Jason's sister, we've seen, Jay, we've seen Sonny's sister pass away. So it can't be her. The only person that it could be is Morgan because he blew up. I just can't think of anybody else, guys. Come on. We got to come together. What would make Jason do all this? What would make Jason say, risk it all? Fuck around and risk it all. Because he's fucking around and he's risking it all for this person. Um, let me get back to it, though. And that the person has leverage. We need to, what's this leverage? That's what I'm talking about. To force me to agree. 
and I've been working as a private military contract mercenary. So that got into my head. Pikemen or the WSB? Pikemen or the WSB? Or was it the Cassadines? Was it something Safaris with Victor? Did he have anything to do with this before he ended up off, off, gone? You know, because how would they get Morgan? I don't know. Is it Julian? I mean, come on. Who is it? I don't I can't think Julian having that much power. This has either got to be somebody that has to do with the WSB or Pikeman. We'll find out. He then tells Michael when he found out the target was Sonny, he made sure Hamish missed. And of course, we all know the rest. He's not sure if he would have came back if the target hadn't been Sonny. But he thought about coming back every single day. That must mean that the person that he's with, that's there, if this is an individual, he must be trying to get them to want to escape with him. And he can't escape with them until this person is willing to go. So this must mean whoever's there is a willing person and participant of the situation. And, and, and Jason's like, I can't leave you here, man. I can't. you, you got to come with me. Morgan? Not the Morgan we used to have. I heard that he's doing projects and they probably won't have him come back with Morgan. Um, but the man with no windows, and this this is classic Jason talk right here. But the man with no windows has, has a job that I gave me a job and I and it isn't done. And and if he doesn't finish, it will be something that he can't live with and he has to finish. So obviously the person that's playing like they love Morgan. I'm just, we're just going to call this person Morgan. We don't know who this is. But for the namesake, so we don't sound crazy like the, like Jason did when he was saying the man, <laughs> the man with no windows. <laughs> we're going to say, so if this is the Morgan person, this obviously this person thinks that the man with no windows is a good person. But this man with no windows is not a good person. This man with no windows is manipulating whoever, Morgan, manipulating Morgan, and Jason's got to have to try to break through with this person, this person. And if we think about it, they said that this person's, uh, they're bringing back way, way old characters, and we still really haven't got too many. I think the last one Sober Dirt said was like 10 years ago. I automatically thought Alcazar, but it could be different. It could be Morgan. Who knows? But, um... And it's some and when and when um, Michael says well, you have to finish, he says if if you don't finish it, he says something's gonna have something he can't live with. That would mean the death of someone that he cares about. Cause they um I'm a, I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna get off of this for one second, cause you know that's all done. Um, and Jason's laying on a hammock or wherever he's at, and he's back, and he's handcuffed to Quantico. And he's being interviewed by whom who? John Cates. John Cates was interviewing Jason in Quantico. Now, as I am recalling, I don't remember Jason and John ever ever meeting for anything like this. So this had to be after the tunnel. So John knew Jason was alive this whole entire time. And didn't say a word. <coughs> John then brings up RICO violations that carry a fed sentence of up to 20 years and that's when Jason wakes up now my question here with this one is we know Jason wouldn't sit here and risk it all for Sonny going to jail for 20 years Sonny's always beating charges even if they had all the evidence in the world Sonny's always beating charges and I don't think Jason would risk it all just so Sonny don't go to jail. If he does, I'm um, Jason. I'm um, what? We still gonna be that guy? We still gonna be the catcher, fetcher boy? Besides, that wouldn't have anything. That would have something to do with something that happened that he can't just can't live with, and he just can't live with Sonny going to jail. Sonny can beat that, and I know Jason has faith in Diane that that could happen. So, but John knows that Jason was alive this whole entire time, guys. So that means Jason, John is not as clean as he pretends to be. Or maybe he is clean, he's just not releasing all the information to Anna because he thinks that she's a succubus for, for um, I might be saying that word wrong, for, um, for, um, for Sonny. Either or, John knew Jason was alive and he has not mentioned that. 
So is that why Jason jumped when he seen John? Because he knows that John knows the man with no windows. Maybe John also is working with the man with no windows. Or maybe when John was done interviewing uh, Jason, he left and the man with no windows came in and, and had a different kind of discussion with uh, Jason and showed him a picture of a young boy named Morgan. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm just all for it. I don't think Friday we're going to get any of these answers, though, because it looks like it's going to be kind of a sleeper. <laughs> but we shall see. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I now i got to combine these two videos together after I figured out how to fix my phone. I just figured it out. And uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You have a fabulous day tomorrow and sleep well. Mwah.